Airplane black boxes, skin implants, Google Maps, medical apps, polymer money, Wi-Fi, refrigerators, and more are all great and famous inventions of Australia, the smallest continent but the sixth largest country on Earth, lying between the Pacific and Indian Oceans in the Southern Hemisphere. However, how much do you know about this strange country? What is the capital of Australia? Sydney? No, it's Canberra. Why was the kangaroo chosen as the symbol of Australia? Because there are many? No, that's because kangaroos are animals that can't walk backward. With that vision in mind, Australia has moved forward over the past decade. But before it achieved what it is today, Australia went through a tumultuous historical period with millions of years in the making. The first settlers on the Australian mainland were thought to have arrived in Australia by sea from maritime Southeast Asia about 50,000 years ago. These original inhabitants, who have descendants to this day, are known as the Aborigines people. The Aborigines, often referred to as nomadic hunter-gatherers and fire-stick farmers, settled primarily in the well-watered coastal areas. They cultivated and irrigated farming areas, established fisheries, built permanent homes, and formed approximately 250 distinct language groups. However, it was believed that Aborigines' poor treatment of the environment over many centuries may have led to the barren nature of much of the Australian interior. Therefore, the population only grew proportionately quicker around 10,000 years ago as the arid climate improved. The first European sightings of Australia were made by a Dutchman called William Janzoon on the Doofkin in 1606, becoming the first European vessel to reach Australia. Janzoon sailed into the Australian waters charting 300 kilometers of the coasts and met with the Aboriginal people on the journey. Also, 29 other Dutch navigators explored the western and southern coasts in the 17th century and named the continent New Holland. However, European settlement only began in 1770. Captain Cook of the British Royal Navy landed in Botany Bay on the eastern side of Australia and colonized the land for Great Britain. Then in 1788, the first fleet of 11 boats under Captain Arthur Phillip set out to establish the first convict settlement on Botany Bay. However, once arrived, he found the area unsuitable for human settlement and then sailed to Sydney Cove in Port Jackson where they founded the first British settlement as a penal colony on January 26th. The colony of New South Wales was formally proclaimed on February 7, 1788. The day, January 26, then becomes an official national holiday known as Australia Day in Australia, while many Aboriginal Australians call it Invasion Day. In the early 19th century, the British established other colonies on the continent, including Van Diemen's Land, present-day Tasmania, Western Australia, South Australia, Victoria, and Queensland. During this period, Aboriginal people were greatly weakened, and their numbers diminished by introduced diseases and conflict with the colonists. In 1851, Gold was discovered in Bathurst, New South Wales, a city approximately 210 kilometers west of Sydney, and soon in the colony of Victoria, kickstarting the Australian economy and making the continent a desirable location. During the era, Victoria produced more than one-third of the world's gold, dominating the world's gold output. Most Australian gold was exported to Britain, which used it to maintain a gold standard for the pound. A series of gold rushes led to a huge influx of people from overseas, causing Australia's total population to triple from 430,000 in 1851 to 1 1.7 million in 1871. These newcomers originated from continental Europe, China, and, to a lesser degree, the United States, New Zealand, and the South Pacific. The increasing population brought about the development of agriculture, transportation, and industry in South Australia, New South Wales, and Victoria to meet the demand of a large amount of population. Between 1855 and 1890, while remaining part of the British Empire, 
The six colonies individually became self-governing with elective democracies. On January 1, 1901, six colonies united to form the Commonwealth of Australia, marking the beginning of Australia as a nation. With the Constitution approved by the British Parliament, the Commonwealth, or Federal Government, was given certain defined powers. All residual powers were given to the governments of the six colonies, which were renamed states. In the first decade of the 20th century, the Australian economy expanded significantly, followed by increased immigration. When the First World War was declared in 1914, Australia entered as an ally to the British. For Australia, the First World War remains the costliest conflict in terms of deaths and casualties. From a population of roughly 5 million, 416,809 men enlisted, of whom more than 60,000 were killed and 156,000 wounded, gassed, or taken prisoner. As the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, Australia once again announced its involvement alongside the Allies to fight against the Axis powers. Almost a million Australians, both men and women, served in the war as they fought in campaigns against Germany and Italy in Europe, as well as against Japan in the Southeast Asia. The Australian mainland came under direct attack for the first time, as Japanese aircraft bombed towns in Northwest Australia, and Japanese midget submarines attacked Sydney Harbour. Over 30,000 Australian servicemen were taken prisoner in World War II, and 39,000 were killed. While those who became prisoners of the Germans had a strong chance of returning home at the end of the war, 36% of prisoners of the Japanese died in captivity. In 1944, the Japanese inflicted the Sandakan Death March on 2,000 Australian and British prisoners of war, during which only six survived. This was the single worst war crime perpetrated against Australians in war. After World War II ended, Australia received a new wave of migrants from Europe and Asia who have contributed significantly to Australia, enriching its culture and broadening its horizons. Besides the Australian economic boom, the post-war era also witnessed the transformation of Australia's foreign policy, which became closely aligned with the United States and adoptive collective security as its foreign policy theme. In 1950, Australia joined the Korean War in support of the United Nations sponsored campaign. The following year, it signed the Australia-New Zealand-United States Security Treaty, which committed the three nations to mutual defense. In 1954, Australia helped found the Southeast Asian Treaty Organization, CEDO, the regional equivalent of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. Australia then supported the United States in the Vietnam War of 1965 and the U.S. naval blockade of Iraq in 1990. Following the terrorist attacks on the United States on September 11, 2001, Australia invoked the ANZUS Treaty and sent troops to Afghanistan and in 2003, participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom. With its constant support for the United States, in January 2005, it was rewarded when the two nations began to observe a bilateral free trade agreement. At the same time, Australia and China are developing an increasingly close relationship and pursuing a free trade agreement. Experiencing a long period with many tense historical events, Australia is now a federal country with a bicameral system of government. So, is Australia still a British colony? No. Australia may have been a British colony before, but now Australia is a completely independent country. The diversified and uniform development of Australia has changed the face of this country day by day, making Australia the 13th largest economy in the world by nominal GDP in 2020, as well as a bright spot to attract settlers and investors around the world. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos of history.